Hello and welcome to another video of time series forecasting. In this video, I'm going to talk about autocorrelation function and correlogram. In the previous video, I talked about the concept of uh, correlation coefficients between different lagged values. And we can calculate the correlation between the current value and the first lag, the current value and the second lag, and the current value and up to kth lag, etc. We calculate a correlation coefficient using this formula which shows how far away th value or the kth lag is from the mean value and this correlation coefficient gives us the direction of the relationship and the strength of the relationship between uh, yt and uh, its lag value. So what we can do is we can calculate several autocorrelations that is we can use different lag values for example the first lag the second lag the third lag fourth lag up to kth lag and we can plot these values and uh, the resulting plot is called autocorrelation function and this plot is also known as correlogram we can look at different correlation coefficients for example the first correlation coefficient will tell us the direction and the strength of the relationship between yt and yt minus 1 but looking at uh, several correlation coefficients is kind of cumbersome because of uh, too many numbers so it's better that we plot those uh, values to make a better sense of this and this is exactly what i'm going to show you i'm going to show you this autocorrelation function that is the graph of uh, these correlation coefficients and we will try to make sense of uh, all these correlation coefficients on the correlogram rather than looking at the numbers. So let's go to R and calculate uh, these correlation coefficients and look at the ACF or correlogram. So I'm in R right now and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run this library FPP2 and then I'm going to use this uh, Australian beer production data set and I'm going to extract the data only after 92. I'm interested only for the beer production data after 92. That's why I'm using this window function and I'm saving my new data set as beer2. Now this uh, beer2 data set will contain quarterly data of beer production after 1992. Okay, so let's look at um, the correlation coefficients. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate all those correlation coefficients with the first lag, the second lag up to kth lag. And I'm going to calculate uh, these correlation coefficients for the 50th lag. I'm going to turn off this switch plot and this way I will get uh, these numbers. So look at these numbers. So the first number with zero lag, it shows the correlation coefficient of yt with itself and we know that a series is perfectly correlated with itself that is why our correlation coefficient for this series is 1 that is there is a perfect correlation between uh, a series to itself with the first lag we got a negative correlation and the correlation coefficient is kind of weak the second lag the correlation coefficient is also negative and the strength is kind of moderate similarly we can look at uh, various correlation coefficients up to the 50th lag. As you can see, looking at these numbers, it's very hard to make any sense of these numbers because these are too many correlation coefficients. So it's better that we represent all these correlation coefficients on a correlogram. So I'm going to use the same function, ggacf, that is we're going to use the package grammar for graphics. And then I'm going to plot this autocorrelation function. And the first argument in this function is this uh, data set beer2 and then we can uh, specify how many lags we want to calculate. In this case, I'm interested in the first 50 lags. So let's go ahead and uh, plot this. Now this is uh, a correlogram and we can see that uh, this correlogram is making more sense as compared with all these numbers. So see here, uh, we can look at uh, various values. For example, the first lag has uh, a negative correlation coefficient and the value is uh, about 0.01, which is apparent from uh, here as well. Probably the more interesting one is uh, this fourth lag, which is uh, statistically significant and which has a value of about 0.87. Another way of uh, looking at uh, this uh, correlogram is 
simply do not specify the number of uh, lags that we want. In this case, this correlogram is representing only 20 lags, which in our case is enough to make uh, sense of uh, these uh, numbers. So we can see that uh, we have statistically significant uh, correlation between yt and yt minus 4, yt minus 8, yt minus 12, etc. And similarly, the second lag is also statistically significant. Sixth lag is also statistically significant. So essentially, this uh, correlogram is showing us the same thing. That's the quarterly data. There is seasonality in the data and there are significant spikes in this data set. And this uh, blue dashed line, it represents uh, that uh, these spikes are statistically significant and they are different from zero. If you do not understand this uh, correlogram yet, don't worry about it. You're going to see this correlogram extensively in this course. I'll talk about uh, these blue dashed line and how to use uh, these lines to determine uh, statistical significance of any correlation coefficient in uh, one of my future videos. But essentially the concept here is that uh, rather than looking at uh, these numbers individually, we are looking at a plot and getting the same picture. And from this graph, we can make sense of uh, various lags. This plot will enable us to identify various patterns in a time series. That is, we can identify trend, seasonality, or the cyclical pattern from this correlogram. And this is the topic that I'm going to discuss in my next video. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.